for the final time. Welcome back to the podcast. As always, you're here with your host, Hoop, along with the... Uh, I forgot it! <laughs> Zany and the infamous ZZ Huncho. <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> We're back. So back. We're so back. We're back, man. Um, I think we got to address the elephant in the room. Where where have we been? And why is uh why is there a third co-host again? So why don't <laughs> why don't why don't we why don't we go over everything? Um, and uh, I mean, if you've clicked on this episode, I think you can see now that we are no longer the podcast. Um, we have rebranded. Yes, uh, two reasons. The main reason being, we We're are now, now independent. We're independent, <laughs> and we cannot afford a lawyer for a certain Lakers player in case he gets mad. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're now a new. We're now and 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 we made sure hoop hoop went and got the trademark for yam time. So we're yeah. we're legally safe. We're legally safe. <laughs> okay? Shout out my lawyer. Amy. Shout out shout out the lawyer. Okay. Um, and two, obviously, you know, um, I'm not gonna bring up. We're not we're not gonna get petty. We're not gonna bring up past problems or whatever. All we're gonna say is. The podcast was signed by a different label. Obviously, we had a fallout where things just didn't work out. And then me and Hoop were kind of left in a gray area for a bit. Um, and it was just a rough time for both of us, I guess, in terms of like how much things we had stacked up. So we understood that it was best to step away for a bit um, and figure things out. And then obviously, we reconnected. I mean, me and Hoop were always in contact all the whole time. We, we weren't like not talking. Um, but we reconnected the pod. And our one condition was obviously we got to bring back you know, a special face who's with us here today. Um, so the, I'm going to give them both the, 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 the floor to talk about their perspective of it, of course. Um, and, and we're going to have a, a small segment at the end of this episode. First 10 minutes are just going to be us explaining things because you guys deserve the explanation. But um, essentially, I, we don't want you to think that this rebrand is, is going to mean that we're redoing everything. We're literally doing the exact same episodes we used to do when it was the three of us, you know, the fun banter um, where it was just the three of us yapping, acting like we know things, but w- let's be we're, honest. We're essentially trying to bring back prime the podcast. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. we're, 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 we're like, imagine LeBron in 2018, right? Like where it's like, people don't, <laughs> they don't think we got it in us, but we, we, <laughs> we got something coming, you know? So um uh, yeah, I'm super excited. It's gonna be fun to Z was rusty. He didn't pause that. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. That's oh crazy. God. See, we're getting yeah, old. See, we're getting see, old. You got. You guys gotta. You guys gotta let us settle back in. But uh, I will say this: um, the one thing we can promise is that unless they offer me a ten million dollar insane lucrative deal and full control to still run things, we're not gonna sign to a label. Um, we're not gonna fall into that trap again of putting our name and our reputation in the hands of somebody else. Because at the end of the day, you know, to be fair to whoever does run things, um, they're going to care about their rep more than ours, right? Uh, So I think the best way to stay authentic to our brand, the best way to stay authentic to you guys, and the best way to bring the best possible content is to be run by us, Um, which leads me into my next point. In the time that I've been off, so I'm going to give you guys a stage after uh, to explain where you guys have been. Um, But I know people, like if you follow my socials, you see I don't really post much anymore. Uh, I took a step back. I was in school. my hardest semester. Yeah. I'm an, I'm an engineering student. So I got destroyed. Um, and in my free time, I actually ended up working on my business, Saini media. We're a marketing company. We also manage, you know, different people's accounts. Um, and I'm grateful I did it. I still do run it, um, because I'm able to now fully run the podcast or game time for us in the background, uh, so that these two boys can, can make sure to really focus on their brands as well, because obviously, um, they, both of them have really done bits when it comes to the social end of things. Um, and I've, I now possess the necessary skill set to make sure that we run smoothly. And it's as, it's as if we're signed uh, to see any media, right? Like w- we have full say in what we do. Um, and that way, you know, every problem is in our hands and we can fix it instead of waiting around for, for, you know, essentially things not to be done, but I'm going to give uh hoop and Z. I don't know who wants to go first. You guys can kind of talk about what you guys have been doing. Hope you gotta go. Um, you gotta go. All right. They gotta, um, they, I'm coming back like the rock. Like I'm okay. out of turn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, I when did we leave off, Saney? Was October it like- Westbrook Westbrook D. I'm happy. You know, I'll tell you this about the deep dives. I'm happy we got a Westbrook episode out, and, <laughs> and then we stopped. And then- um, basically, ever since Z left and just trying to go into the uh, when we transitioned into a different type of episode that required more research and it was less off the dome. I guess um, I had always been like hoopology first and trying to grow my stuff. So it got really like tedious to the point where I, uh, it, the pod was no longer fun for me. Um, 
and it was fun when we were just chilling and joking around but when things got too serious and it was like just trying to uh you know do it for a, as, 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 as a business move um i realized there was no point in it so since um october i don't know what the growth has been on my page but basically back when we were all together my my tiktok has shot up um i'm sitting around 1.4 million there which i'm super excited about um i'm trying thank you i'm trying to transition into some youtube stuff some longer form stuff just trying to make this into a full time so how, how are you doing youtube stuff i <laughs> it's funny you ask <laughs> uh saini is my editor and he is the my partner um shout out lex he's also yeah, a shout, out lex. <laughs> shout out lex shout out and lex and jesse lex and jesse my team um that we, yeah, again, we, like we don't. I don't want you guys thinking me and Hoop just weren't talking uh, during the time off. Like yeah. we're all still connected. We um we took about three months to pump out a Julius Randall forty minute documentary, which um it was beautiful. I, I that was, was the greatest <laughs> video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I, I will plug right here. I, I will do that shamelessly. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I mean, it's just been going really well for like as as my personal brand. Um, but there's still more to be done in terms of trying to just make this into a full-time career and something like, you know, my dream coming true. So I'm really happy that, um, things have blown up, but I'm not satisfied, obviously. And even though the pod was something that was like really tough to kind of get back into, because I thought it would be a lot of work, Sandy kind of, you know, did some convincing. Um, and now that this could be just something that's, you know, fun, um, I'm down for a good time, you know, like, I'm just, I just want to screw around and like make fun of your guys' teams and like, just get back into that kind <laughs> we're, of bag, we're, you know? like little prime, the pod, like prime <laughs> the podcast. I we're game time now. Uh, the podcast is a French saying. It has nothing to do with the name of a certain individual. Um, uh, le podcast, but, uh, yeah, no, Z, I'm excited. I want to hear Z's, Z's return. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Hell is frozen over. I am back. Good Lord. Um, you may be wondering where I've been, and I've been pretty much all over the place. Uh, like Hoop mentioned, the last time that we were all together, our TikToks were at different pra- Why is he? Why is he doing? <laughs> what is he doing? Why? <laughs> But <laughs> for Spotify uh, listeners, Z, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that th- you had to get cut <laughs> off like that. But for Spotify listeners, Hoop Hoop uh, apparently has been on his uh, self development uh, uh, <laughs> type. Uh, on my, uh, we're gonna we're gonna re- resist cussing here. But Hoop has been on his self development stuff apparently, and he just pulled out like a four liter <laughs> water jug and just hold started on, on. chugging it. <laughs> In the middle, and he was muted. Like he he didn't want to hear the big old gulps. Pause. So I'm saying, so he bro, just was... because I know he was. I know no, that sh- hold on, that hold was on, running hold on. down his. Uh, I, I was pause, pause. I wasn't gonna say something crazy. Stop, Jesus. Stop. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I completely forgot that this was like not normal. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing 75 hard with some friends. Uh, which is like, you know, you, you stick to a diet for 75 days, drink a gallon of water. It. So I got my gallon jug here. Respect, respect. Uh, Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I was interrupted by <laughs> Gold Monster. But uh, I, 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 I might, I might got to run to the bathroom a couple of times after. It's all right. Bro, was trying to do the John Cena cleanse. I feel <laughs> it. Um. Anyway, so I've been. I was gone for a while. Uh, like Hoop alluded to, our TikToks were at different places. Our socials in general were at different places. By the last time we were together, um. Since then, I'm at like 63k now. Uh, since switching up my content. By the way, shout out to these two boys. Shout out to these two boys. Switching up my content, more voiceover work. I dealt with a lot of comments saying that I was bro trying to be like Hoopology. And I'll be like, bro, oh, I know I, I got the like, same thing. I I'll be like, same saying he did the same thing for a I bit. I got the same yeah. thing. <laughs> so and you know yeah, what's yeah, so yeah. funny? Z, I know you relate to this so much. I read those comments and I'm like, bro, who, to, who, exactly. who do you think told me to do this? Who do you think taught me how to do this? What do you, what do you, you wh- why do you think it's emulated so well? It's because I literally sat down with Hoop and he showed me bar for bar. Yes, bro. I, I, I wasn't like claiming for it to be like my original <laughs> content. I was shamelessly doing it, but it's like they, they didn't realize that this guy was on the phone with us like every day telling us, oh, you need to go on Cap exactly. and then you need to record the overlay <laughs> and then do this and, and just, just record a YouTube video with your phone. Like, wh- what do you think I got the formula from? That's what I'm saying, bro. We were out there, me and Sandy out there balling like prime Kobe. This is our Phil Jackson right here. Bro, this is like, the guy. Hoop, I remember one time Hoop commented on my post saying like, mm-hmm. guys, like I, it's, I, I told had to them clear to do the this. air because they and were like And then somebody replied you. to that comment, bro wants to be Hoopology. 
And I was like, <laughs> we, like it's, it can't be done. But hey, whatever. I, I appreciate all the goons I have out there, but like, you gotta relax a <laughs> who, little bit. You know? Who has a little mafia running around NBA oh, TikTok? Literally. But yeah, man, I've been doing that. I've been uh, I've been dabbling in with Players Choice. Uh, those are my guys. They 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 picked me up when I was a free agent. You know what I'm saying? I did a Lakerland show. With Lightout Sports, if y'all remember my first ever co-host for any podcast I was a part of, shout out, shout out Lightout, uh, you suck by the way. Um, and so we've been chilling, you know. I've been, uh, I got a call from 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 my boys saying we wanted to run it back. Um, all I'll say about the past encounter that we did have is that uh, at one point I was following 900 people on Instagram, and then after that I was following 899. So you know. You might take a guess as to who that was, but it was somebody's favorite basketball page. Um, anyway, moving forward, uh, I know we're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into it, but I am ZZ Huncho, so I will get something off. Um, we're back. Yam yeah, Tom, full effect. It's I will Tom. say, I will say, you know, I'm, again, like I, we had this call already, Z, but I am, you know, forever grateful um, for you to come back. Obviously, it's it's gen- truly isn't the same. It truly was not the same as like as, as serious nah, as we try to get. I think again, me and Hoop had this call with you. We discussed it, but I'll say this publicly too. Like it was a mistake, also on mine and Hoop's end to to kind of have that idea implemented that we need to take more of a business route when we didn't. The end of the day was about having fun, and the second you treat it the way me and Hoop treated it, you know, obviously it got stressful. It was mentally draining, um, and like bro, like Hoop would just say some out of pocket things, and nobody would pause. And I just I can't I control to, myself. I'd have man. to sit. I'd have to sit there crying in the inside. You know? <laughs> I had to sit there. Uh, you know, just it was a tough time. You know, to hear Babe, all those bro. comments. <laughs> no, but seriously, we're back. We're back. Uh, we're back. I mean, that's a little gist. I mean, we're gonna do a short segment for you guys here because you know we're not gonna just only talk and then the episode here. We have to have some sort of banter. So I gotta we, take my sweatshirt off for this. We just gotta mention this. <laughs> Who me and you. Me and you, obviously, we're living life, and and our poor friends easy uh-huh. here hopped on the bandwagon a little too late. So <clears> how, <throat> let's let's get this straight. Let, let me get something straight here, okay? When did Z hop on it? When they won the ring, right? The year they won the ring, Z becomes a Warriors fan, right? I believe it was that off season. It was that it off season. Off season, my Z, birthday. So somehow he was a, a Warriors <laughs> fan. And the, the and and then obviously I was ten toes with Oklahoma. I I can you know what I will Let's, also attest don't, to this. Don't just say that. Like he took the whole LeBron like decision route. Like I'm yeah, there. Like, He's yeah. like I'm thinking I'm Milwaukee birthday. or Golden State. He, he I'm going. I'm birthday, going Golden bro. State. I remember because we started recording in June. He was like July. I'm making my decision. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here. And we're gonna, like, so I was expecting like an actual like I was honestly thinking Miami just because of the way he set it up, but. Anyway, I'm and I can attest to this too. So nobody can call me a bandwagon now that Oklahoma is currently yeah, first yeah. in the West. Right? Genuinely, genuinely, I have been with that team, and people are gonna say, "Oh, he was there because the KD Russ era." Bro, you can go on my TikTok. You will not find, bro. Oklahoma follows me because of the dirty work I did in the trenches for that team. <laughs> in in the time that we didn't have no fans, nobody cared about Oklahoma in 2021. Nobody cared about Oklahoma in 2022. 2023, the memes came out about the draft pick. So it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we have some some fans come in because they know the future's there. But I was there every day of my life. Every day of my life, I sat on that team, and we are number one in the West now. And the fact that I could come somewhere publicly and 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 be proud of that, because obviously I stopped socials for a bit. I, I have a lot – like I, I'm focusing a lot on the, the background of things now for, every, for everybody's pages. But number one in the West – and I, Golden State isn't even in the play-in. They're not even in the play-in. How, do, how does Steph Curry drop 60 points? 60 points and Shout lose. Shout out Killer Clay. And lose. Bro, I, I swear to you, bro, I never have been, and I love Curry with the bottom of my heart, but I hate the Warriors. I have never, bro, I've never seen a downfall. The second Draymond Green swung at Jonah Poole, it's over. I was, I was like, it's done. There's no way. There's no look, way. There's look, no all way. I'm gonna say and, and, is bro, it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful basketball. I just all I'm gonna say is uh it's ironic that the team that I left behind was Hoops Knicks. Uh it's very ironic that they're sitting with the third seed in the Eastern Conference right now. Fourth. Uh, they're fourth because the, the Cavs have a no, 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 I'm kidding. Um look, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious, but hey, look. 
I like everything that I'm seeing. I'm not going to be that type of hater. You know what I'm saying? I, I like the fact that New York is doing that thing. Shout out to Stephen A. and Spike Lee or Tracy Morgan or whoever don't, else. Don't, leave, don't put Stephen um, A. in this mix. He is in the mix. No, and, that, and, and it's embarrassing, but he is in the mix. As, as to, okay, he hates this team. He, <laughs> he has never approved anything going on with this franchise. He so hated when they win, Jackson. He's all happy. James Dolan, Mello when he was there. <laughs> Bro, yeah, honestly, I like I, I talk about me having it rough, but I didn't like who had it. <laughs> who had it, has had it bad? <laughs> like, <laughs> I you don't understand. I have been like to the death. You know, you know those memes where they got Patrick Starr held up by the chains. Yeah, <laughs> that's me for Julius Randle for the last four years of NBA basketball. You know how difficult <laughs> that is? That is a one versus everyone situation. Bro, and it's, co- it's coming to fruition. There's a it's coming to fruition. There's a 40-minute documentary you <laughs> made on this man. Yes. So Go let me watch. ask you this question. Just, just because uh, I'm going to take a little segue here, but the Patrick Starr meme. Yeah. Right, so hoop, hoop is on the fences. for uh, Hoop is Patrick Starr for Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. I am Patrick Starr for Clay Thompson. That's, is Patrick we're gonna, we're gonna have to test that. Saney is Patrick Starr for Josh Giddy. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be real. Over under on Josh. 15 and a half. Talk, <laughs> talk, to, <laughs> talk to me. Bro, no, nah, I'll say this. I'll say this. Uh, about the just bro like i'll be honest like it was, a, it was a good time for me to take a break from social media because that was a great bro i was getting dms like crazy and i haven't made a video in like four months like i found out from my dms right because i was getting destroyed with school bro like like school like bro electrical engineering is no joke so i'm mm-hmm. getting destroyed and i and it was like midterm season i'm sitting there trying to muster up a 40 and josh is out here apparently mustering up a 16 right i was i was sick to my stomach no but i'm making this joke no no no. there's a reason i'm making this joke and i I can probably make these jokes now right he's innocent like they found him innocent Mm. so it's we're just making lighthearted jokes poor guy i the the story i heard was that the girl had a fake id went to the club yeah yeah i heard it like bro like he met her in the club and he was like 19 at the time so like and she was like realistically like if she has a fake like what's he gonna do it's not like he was like a 28 year old like old man who like, it's called Malone it's, it's, type like even if she is legal like <laughs> bro is she legal you know what i mean it wasn't that type of situation so uh, i i still like i i respect giddy for sticking through it. i felt bad bro because you can only imagine how it feels to have your name dragged through the month like yeah. that when it's like a situation that's out of your hands and apparently he told the nba about it right when it happened in last year um and they're aware of it they mm-hmm. were aware of it and the police couldn't find anything in, in the investigation like it, it, it was just a it was just an unfortunate event. So that's the only reason I'm making a joke, Giddy. I love you still. You know, I, I knew I knew deep down you were a good guy. Um, and I hope I hope that it is the fact that you're a good guy and you just didn't get away with it. Um, but, you know, I'm inclined to believe you. And I and he's been great. He's been great for us. He just had 24 against the Raptors. So, um, yeah, that's the only that's the only reason I'm making a joke. I don't want I don't want people to think I'm a hater. But uh i'm uh, i'm patrick Stafford westbrook bro come on how do how do we not yeah yeah how do we not yeah, say yeah. that and, and, and uh you guys see the clippers lately you guys see westbrook lately you, you see like, yeah. I'm, on the, I'm on the biggest high of my life in terms of being a basketball fan in the regular <laughs> season hey, as a Kawhi leonard fan i'm digging it too yeah man they're good they're good I, I i said it uh i was on playback yesterday doing a live stream and i said that the one person that i'm going to give the most credit to for the clippers success is Russell Westbrook, head and shoulders over everybody else. I don't care. Kawhi's been solid. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. James Harden's been an, another great regular season performance from James Harden. Regu- I, I, I forgot he's a Harden time. hater. I forgot he's a Harden The greatest regular hater. season. Not, not in the regular you season. remember that debate. Not in the regular scene. season. Oh, my in God. The, don't get me wrong. Harden, greatest regular season merchant of all time. Don't Jawan would be the close second. But good Lord, I can't wait for the postseason to get here. Bro, but, but, uh, think, about it, think about it. Hypothetically, Kawhi's healthy, right? Like, screw mm-hmm. Paul George. Like I, I, or, like, I love Paul George, but like, like not thinking of Paul George right now. Kawhi's yeah. healthy, arguably one of the best playoff performers of all time. You're giving James Harden that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is why I, I actually genuinely believe that this Clippers team is the favorite. Like, I think even if the Celtics go up against them, the Clippers win. I, oh, I only 100%. Reason, think about mm-hmm. it this way. The Clippers are, what, one game back from the first seed as of February 5th, or, or February 5th before the game started. So, mm-hmm. or February 4th. Let's just say as of February 4th. The Clippers are, what, one game back from the one seed? And what was their record when Harden first got there? Right? Like, they were terrible. Yeah. It took them, like, 15 games to figure it out. And they're like eleven and three in the month of January. They they don't lose. 
Like it's ridiculous. Like, and, and Kawhi, we've never seen, and I, I pray to God, I pray to God that PG and Kawhi stay healthy and that whole team stays healthy. But the fact that we actually are seeing Kawhi play basketball in the regular season, he's an all-star starter. You know what I mean? Like I never yeah. thought I would see that day again. Paul George is an all-star. I know people want to argue that he doesn't deserve the spot, but at the end of the day, he's playing at an all-star level. You can argue that somebody else deserved his spot, but there's so much talent in the league that I don't care. Like I'm not mad that Paul George is fair, an all-star. Wasn't he at, at a solid like 26, 27 in game before Harden came over? Yeah. Like he's yeah. a good bro. Like, I'm not mad that Paul George is an all star. I get why people are mad because, like, obviously, like Sabonis fans and like they like all these Darren Fox fans, even though he's not a guard. Bro, but, like, I don't know how Cat made over Sabonis. Yeah, like that's crazy, right? Like, I think there's other players you can argue, um, but either way, the Clippers are playing the best basketball they've played, I think, ever. I think this is the best Clippers basketball we've ever seen in the history of the Clippers. Um, and again, credit to Westbrook, bro. He, he gets the least amount of minutes on that team, but I think he brings most energy, right? Like he played yeah. the least amount of minutes the last game. He played only 15 minutes. But it works, you know? And as a Westbrook fan, I can swallow my pride and just please get him a ring. I don't care what how it's done anymore. I just really need to see a ring on. And, bro, like, think about that, like, what we can get from a Clippers championship, a Harden PG Russ ring. That is an insane lineup of guys who don't have a ring that finally get theirs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it would be a good day. Like, that is a team that the NBA should push to get a ring. Like, let's be real. Like, bro, like, Ain't nobody want to see the Warriors win for the next 50 years, right? <laughs> Bucks already yeah. got one. Bucks already got one. Um, sorry, I, I lagged a bit. You know you know who could use a ring? Derrick Rose. I was just going to say the Knicks, but... That'd be yeah, oh. but anyway, like... The, the, <laughs> Y'all the Clippers, got one. The Clippers, are the, the Clippers are the best team to get a ring right now because, again, they'd have a banner in their new arena. Like, it seems like written in the stars. Because they're having that yeah. all-star game in Los Angeles, the next one, right? Or the one after, whatever. Um, so to have the banner unveiled in their new arena next season with Harden, PG, Russ, Kawhi would cement himself really, like, after the time he's taken off, like, as a guy where it's like, I don't care. As long as Kawhi's playing, he's better than any player you'll put in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just, I want to see, and Tyron Lue will beat the LeBron allegations. You know, like he already, he already beat him. <laughs> yeah, the but fact like, that he's still been coaching for this yeah. long, like. <laughs> but you, know, wanna, you, you guys see that Doc Rivers got the All Star now. Yes, bro. Bro. three basketball bro, games. And you know, and you know what's them. you know what's so shameless of him. You know what's so shameless of him. He goes, "Yeah, I'll let Adrian Griffin share the coaching role with me. Share it. Yeah, share it. What did you do? Hey, I'm just glad we don't got to hear his raspy voice on the on the yeah. crew, like, <laughs> ESPN crew, whatever it is. Uh, just but, wanna, I mean, yeah. I, he he got some on the league, bro. He got to. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way that he's gotten this many. Didn't, he, didn't he blow a double digit lead, or am I tripping? Already, uh, he, he's one and two so far, I think, with the Bucks. Like in his first three games before they give. I thought they had a nice comeback on the Mavs. That was like a twenty point comeback. Oh, maybe, like maybe maybe it was the opposite. Maybe that's, that's definitely enough to get the All Star coaching job. Well, the craziest yeah. thing that the craziest thing to me is get like a Adrian the worst defensive team ever. <laughs> yeah, no, the craziest thing to me is that, is that Adrian Griffin literally they were what the third seed when he got fired. They had lost less than fifteen games throughout his no, two. No, but I heard, nah, I heard if, you, if you speak to Bucks fans, if you speak to Bucks fans, mm -hmm. it was it was due. They hate him. Yeah. So, so here's my and thing. Two, here's my Dame thing. is underperforming even if, as well. Dame he is exactly exactly. But even if Milwaukee, I got to Milwaukee exactly. Uh, politics kid but i've said it before even with milwaukee uh fans thinking that he needed to go the front office was like all right what are our biggest problems dame who we banked for is underperforming and we can't play defense where do we go from here doc rivers what's happening right now yeah no that's what is crazy. genuinely that's happening crazy that's nah, the craziest thing i've so seen i think the well I'm not saying it's a good explanation, but I think the explanation is that you're bringing in a guy mid-year who needs to have the locker room. Mm. And Doc is someone who, for whatever reason, for whatever <laughs> reason, is still respected by players for a ring he won 15 years ago. So <laughs> I think that saying, might be your bro. best bet for a short term I try to pull this thing together. I'll say this. Every single one of Doc Rivers' teams, the teams he's had haven't really had success since he left anyway, right? Like, we can put a lot of blame on Doc Rivers, of course. But, for example, like the Sixers. Like, what have the Sixers done since Doc Rivers left, right? They've been frying yeah, with Embiid, to be fair. They, they're good. They're good. They're no, good. No, they were, they were very good. 
without I'm saying with Nick Nurse, he was a huge upgrade. He, I a hundred percent, a hundred percent, right? But I'm just saying, I'm they just didn't saying, have time to do anything. The playoffs didn't reach yet. <laughs> what are you talking just about? Listen, just listen, just listen, just listen. Let me get my <laughs> point up. Let me get my point up. Let me get my point up. Doc Rivers has yet to be put in a situation where we know that team succeeded without him, right? So I'm interested to see what would Doc Rivers do. The Bucks did they not win a ring? That, I'm just that's my point. We've never seen Doc Rivers get put in a situation where they succeeded without him before Doc Rivers came. So now I know if the Bucks underperform or if the Bucks pull some crazy whatever, I'm going to be like, all right, Doc, this is the Doc Rivers problem. Because look at the Clippers, for example, right? You go listen to JJ Reddick's podcast, whatever. That locker room hated each other. They were not connected whatsoever. Like that was not mm -hmm. like on paper. They were great. They're not connected. You go to the Sixers, the whole Ben Simmons drama, right? Like that fell on Doc Rivers lap. What is he supposed to do about that? Right. So yeah. I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt in terms of like, I know the situation worked for Milwaukee. They have a great team. You have a depoy in Brooke Lopez, a depoy candidate in Brooke Lopez. Bobby Portis is the second coming of Michael Jordan, apparently. Giannis is Giannis. And then you have Damian Lillard, who 25 and 7 is underperforming for Lillard, which is very good still for a, for a starting point guard. Right. So now I know if Doc Rivers messes this up, then I will truly give no credibility to Doc Rivers and, and write him <laughs> off as a coach. But when I look back on Doc Rivers' situation, situations i do have to give him the benefit of the doubt of like like it, it's it wasn't just a him problem you know what i mean like look mm -hmm. at those teams like that clippers team was dysfunctional as hell blake griffin was like punching trainers and breaking his hand yeah. and, and chris paul was getting injured every second day right like they blew a 3-1 comeback to the blazers or was it a 3-1 comeback with the blazers because austin rivers had to turn up or was that was that just they lost to the blazers because austin rivers had to turn up i think chris I, paul got out blake whatever and yeah. then you go to the sixers and ben simmons passes that layup up right? That's not a Doc River. You can't, no matter how good of a coach you are, you cannot stop that. You cannot stop somebody passing that, making that decision, right? I'll say that too. I gave him the benefit of the doubt last year in the postseason when Harden just crapped the bed. To yeah, the, the like, MPG. I was that. like, like, you can't, I was like, because here's my thing. I remember the Discord being like, like on my ass, like when Harden dropped 40. Well, and geez, I'm like, because I'm uh, like, yo, Cause no, 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 and, no. Embiid was not in the right spot. Exactly, either. exactly, exactly. Embiid was also hurt too. So we'll, once again, out of Doc's that's control. Doc Rivers, yeah, right. Like yeah. that's why. So I'm it's saying, like now with this yeah. team, let's see what Doc Rivers does, and then if he re if he messes this up, <laughs> then I will officially, officially write off Doc Rivers as a coach. Uh, if if Doc messes this up, he is officially no longer a coach. He is a terrorist. That is that is. <laughs> <laughs> bro, 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 bro is an imposter at this point. Like, no, we can't give him no more chance. His son, his son, they already said no to Austin a couple years ago. Now Austin is trying to find relevancy again on podcasts and in Turkish leagues. But Doc Rivers, <laughs> if he messes up again, bro, oh, bro, you God. see what Austin Rivers said? He was like, I don't want Bronny to play with LeBron. Yeah, yeah, like he just hated it. He, he only <laughs> built arenas type stuff. He don't know what to do. Bro, oh, 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 There's too many that. guys on podcasts. I'm getting upset because Melo's turned into an old head hater. Yeah. 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 I was I mean, like, we're, why we're do we have to see podcast, this? So let's you know, relax. You know who would have been so cold <laughs> if he never opened his mouth? Paul who? Pierce. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he would have been so, like, his highlight tapes would be so much colder if he just never talked. I'm what afraid Melo's going to mess up his... I, I, well, <laughs> I know we said this is going to be a short episode, but I talked to Z about this briefly before Hoop joined, so I want to throw a curveball at Hoop here because this is a Gilbert, like Gilbert Arenas, as you mentioned. Bro, I still said something to talk to about my Knicks, but it's okay. Oh, talk about your Knicks. I you got time. We're going on a rant. Yeah, Go we got time, bro. Yeah. No, I was, I was just saying, um, you know, I'm trying to keep this on the low because the Knicks have not been this good my entire lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. Um, what are you, what are you going to say? I was going to say Brunson has been your best acquirement since Patrick Ewing. <laughs> Better than Melo? Yeah. I'll um, be honest, bro. Melo did not get you playoff success. Well, it's also team. Team and everything, well. sure. Like, Melo's legendary New York. Knicks fans are going to hate me for saying that. But Brunson, to me, is beautiful. Bro, he plays beautiful basketball. I love him. I love him. I might be biased because I'm a huge Brunson fan. But I think Brunson is going to do no, more for New York uh, than Melo did. The, uh, I don't think that's crazy. Um, the footwork, when I first saw him come to New York... I was ready to put him like literally on the on the level footwork wise of like mm. Kobe Bryant, like that dude. I, his footwork yeah. is like he's Mad. he's he's like Mad. six foot flat, six one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if there's anyone else that size that has gotten his way consistently since AI. Beautiful. Is dude. there another guy? 
Uh, no. Especially from the mid range too, like at bro. Six one, no. Yeah, the, only, the closest guy I can think of is what Donovan hey, Mitchell is six two. Hold on, Jamal, Mur Jamal Murray. Oh, that's true. John, Donovan Mitchell short. Donovan Mitchell well, short. Think about Jamal. Actually, no, just one on one. There's no, no, no comparison. No, well, Jamal, no. Jamal. Only reason I'm saying Jamal is because Jamal's footwork is underrated to me. I remember watching him. Sure. Play. I forgot what not it was. Brunson, but not they told me that Jamal Murray in high school, maybe in high school, middle school, he had played center. Like, for some reason, for whatever team he was on back when he was little. Mm -hmm. Like, he had the footwork developed there. So when you saw some of the good performances that he had, like, last year in the postseason, I'm looking at him and I'm like, yo, his footwork, not personally, I don't think it's better than Jalen Brunson. I'm not saying that. But mm -hmm. what I'm saying is it's underrated to a fault because bro used to play center. So it's like yeah. it's he has yeah. the fundamentals down pack yeah. with him patting in mid-range fadeaways and stuff. But Brunson, different level. I feel you. In one-on-one -on -one situations, like – I mean, in terms of scoring guards, I don't know if there's that many. In, ter in terms of yeah. point guards, is there a point guard in the East that is a better player than Jalen Brunson? How right is now? he not starting? How did da Damian it's Lillard turning over him is a crime? It's a crime. It is a crime. <laughs> it's a crime. I, will, I will admit there's times where Jalen Brunson has tunnel vision. I think it's really opened up now that uh, Randall has gone out because he's forced mm -hmm. to be the, the table setter more. Yeah. Um, but now that these guys like Precious Achua is getting minutes and he's getting like big time like defensive stops and they're kind of fine Isaiah Hartenstein is He's going good. to get a bag yeah, this offseason because of yeah. Mitch being out it's very similar to the Nerlens Noel situation in 2021 yeah. where Mitch went down and they had someone huge step up difference between this and 2021 is that 2021 was just it was a cute year mm. hey we got regular season wins we're back in the playoffs this is like okay these dudes are serious um because however inconsistent or uh, non-translatable, you want to say Randall's game is to the playoffs, which I think it's gotten much more so now that he's playing more bully ball than these uh, step-back threes. Yeah. Um, Jalen Brunson can close. So, like, you get it close yeah, enough yeah. with the defense, yeah. and OG's a big step up from RJ and them. Like, Bro, woo! OG is probably the best trade I've seen the Knicks pull off in my memory. Like, I Yo, don't you, remember the Knicks pulling off You get off us, a like, trade. a nice Malcolm Brogdon off the bench. Some nice, like, and veteran bro, Malcolm Brogdon's gonna be cheap, man. Like, they need to get rid of him, right? Like, that Blazers team, like, they, they you can get him for a first round pick, two first round picks. Yeah, maybe. I, I love uh, Deuce and Quentin Grimes. I'm hoping well, we'd have to keep one of them, but mm. um, in terms of like losing quickly had to hurt, losing quickly had to hurt, it did, but it's not that bad when you're winning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love yeah. Emmanuel quickly. Um, I was, but do you happy need him realistically? RJ, but as of right now, we don't, no. and I think if you get Brogdon for a first and and Grimes. Mm. Um, which I'd rather keep Grimes than McBride, but uh, that's up for debate. I just the, the Knicks are pretty serious, man. But here's the thing: like Grimes isn't your make or break franchise player. You need to exactly. win now, right? Exactly. Like you need to make that decision. Like exactly. do you want to do you want a above average role player for the future, or do you want to win? Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think that's where a lot of people like. As much as I love Emmanuel quickly, and I think that he can develop into an All Star, let's say in Toronto. Realistically, that wasn't going to happen in New York. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Yeah, he, uh, he was a nice. He, he never translated to the playoffs either year he was he was no. in. and it was it was True. different in 2021 because that was year one yeah but um 2023 he didn't do anything either and that kind of got thrown under the radar um so to open it up to mcbride who was not getting minutes and is now yeah. like really rising in some stock if we were to ship him out and get some in return yeah um brunson is ready to win now and like you need to take advantage because if you screw around with the knicks it's it's not we're not gonna um completely overpower some of these bigger teams mm. but you can't screw up against us like yeah. very um, i forget our record against under uh 500 teams but like if you play bad like the knicks take advantage you know mm. which and and uh it's gonna be interesting i this postseason is gonna be a hell of a postseason because there is genuinely so much talent in the like the west especially is cleveland's like, playing great too by the way yeah yeah, yeah no they're jared, all, allen. jared allen jared allen yeah like he's, he's balling but uh i, I want to leave on this segment because i talked to z about it and he mentioned gilbert arenas and it's in my mind um and i have a very great counterpoint to make to gilbert arenas when he said this and i will mention mine but i want to get hoops opinion and z's opinion live um gilbert arenas mentioned that he would rather tank anthony edwards over shea gilgis alexander because anthony edwards is in a better spot at this point in his career than shea was when Shea was at Anthony Edwards like year, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I'll say to that point before I let you guys take the stage. Are, are we saying like take them for the rest of their career? Or yeah. Just right now. Like you, t like I would rather, st I think he said I'd rather start a franchise with Ant or I'd like, okay. I want Ant okay. over Shea, whatever. But I, I'm assuming because he said like at this point in his career, Anthony Edwards was better than Shea. Here's the thing about Shea and here's the thing about Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards was drafted as a first overall pick to a Minnesota Timberwolves team that had no identity when they drafted him. It was Carl Anthony Towns, the Chihuahua, and they this was before Rudy Gobert, right? Like they were not a good team whatsoever. That's a reason they had the number one pick, 
right? And when you're a number one pick, what's going to happen? You're going to get fed the ball 24 seven. You're going to be the main center of attention. They're going to develop the hell out of you. And you're going to be in a much better spot if you play your cards right. For example, Paulo Banquero, right? Like he's amazing mm-hmm. because all they did was feed him the ball and give him the touches and give him the opportunities to learn from his mistakes as quick as possible. You take a guy like Shea, who was drafted 11th to a Clippers team that made the playoffs and took the Warriors to six games. And then the year after his rookie season, when he was making a name for himself on that team, he gets traded to Oklahoma. But this isn't a taking Oklahoma because we still have Dennis Schroeder, Steven Adams, Chris Paul. Like we still have a bunch of vets that Oklahoma is clearly trying to flip for assets. So we make the playoffs and take the Rockets to seven games with Chris Paul at the forefront. And again, like Shea averaged like 16, I think 17 that season, which is still great for being like the third option. People forget Gallinari was a bucket on Oklahoma. Right. Like he was nice. He was scoring for us like crazy. We had Schroeder come off the bench. Like we had a solid team. And that's the reason why we made the playoffs as a fifth seed tied with the Rockets as the fourth seed. Right. And then Chris Paul leaves, all these guys leave. And then Shea realistically gets put in the same situation as Anthony Edwards was in his first year by the time he's in his third year. So that's mm-hmm. when Shea gets to take that leadership role. And that's when Shea gets to really have a team for himself. And it took him, what, three seasons before he became the first seed in the West? It's, just, it's basically the same timeline as Anthony Edwards. Shea just had the extra years of being on a playoff team with playoff experience with his first two seasons, which is something he can't control. He was put in a different situation. I guarantee you, you put Shea in the same situation as Anthony Edwards is in, and he'll develop the same way, if not better, because Shea is a better player than Anthony Edwards right now. It's clear that he is. And I think that he'll continue to be a better player as his career goes on because, to me, Shea is a more complete better player. He's much yeah. better defensively to me. Offensively, they're about the same. If anything, Shea's a little better because I think Shea has a has better footwork. His mid-range game is lethal. His efficiency is at a all-time high. Bro, 55%, 32 points per game. Are you crazy as a guard, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I think Shea can finish out games much better than Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards has not really shown me he's he's just clutch. Shea has shown me he's one of the clutchest players in the league time and time again. And I've yeah. constantly brought this up with you guys when we were doing the OG episodes. I was like, watch out for Shea, right? Because that you guy remember is that, you remember He's that, one of the most uh, clutch TikTok players in the who, league. <laughs> you, remember that, you remember that clip where Sadie was like, the hoop was like, I don't think he's going to be a top 10 player going into this season. And then Sadie's like, oh, you really believe that? And then I'm like, yeah, I don't think he's going to be a top 10 player either. Literally, that season, he was a top 10 player last season. And he's, he's, he's going to be MVP in now that Embiid's out. I don't think they're mm-hmm. going to give it to Jokic because voter fatigue. I genuinely think this is Shea's year to win the MVP because the one thing he has over Luka is the first seed, which is yeah. a very hard thing yeah. to get. And... And, and bro, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't just spew things. Like, I, I spewed the Detroit Pistons take uh, being better than uh, the I Knicks. Gonna, so, gonna, I, I, I spew sometimes. But a lot of my hot takes have some credibility. Hoop, Hoop, who put you on Jalen Williams? No, you did. I texted Hoop <laughs> in, like, the first week of last season. I said, I texted him, I said, this guy, Jalen Williams, make a video on him. He is going to be a great player. I promise you. Hoop, had, Hoop didn't even know the guy existed. And I told him, this is the biggest <laughs> steal I've seen. Oklahoma do in recent memory is Jalen Williams. That guy is cold. And I said, Shea is going to be, I'm t- I have something in my heart. Like, bro, when it comes to Oklahoma players, I know, I know, I know deep down how, <laughs> what, what our potential is. And I'm going to tell you right now, go to Gilbert Arena's point. I think it's unfair to compare the two at whatever stage Anthony Edwards' career is at compared to what stage Shea's was at at that time. Because, bro, they were in two completely different situations. And yeah. Anthony Edwards had Minnesota trade away all of their assets for Rudy Gobert and build themselves a decent play. Or not decent. They're second in the West. Built themselves a credible playoff team, right? Oklahoma didn't do that. Oklahoma built through the draft. Oklahoma yeah. took a different route. I was going to say, um, in terms of the different situations, I think, well, the hypothetical sounds nice that like Shea would have developed quicker. I mm. mean, I, I was not watching many early Clippers games with mm. him. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of the play style they have, obviously Shea is more refined. Mm. Um, so in terms of like giving someone the the keys without that uber athleticism, um, to like help them, like give them a head start on everyone, um, means I don't know if if Shea would have, you know, and this is kind of irrelevant because I do think Shea is the better player. Um, yeah. and considering he controls more of the offense, I'd want him on my team instead of Ant. Um, if Ant was more of a dominant ball handler, I'm trying to like maybe more like a like a Dwayne Wade, mm. where you're more comfortable yeah. in that kind of setting, yeah. Yeah. I might lean Ant because I've seen it in the playoffs. Um, yeah. 
but I have no reason to doubt that Shea would drop that much considering with how much work he does in the mid range. And he's um, has playoff experience and he's played good in the playoffs in the years he was there, bro. He was crucial for the Clippers surprisingly. Mm-hmm. And when they took the Warriors to six games and they took the Rockets with James Harden and Westbrook to seven games. Right. Mm-hmm. And like that Rockets team might not look great when they played the Lakers, but bro, this is a, like a sophomore Shea with a undrafted Lou Dort and a 35 year old Chris Paul. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All that to say, and they I, only uh, lost by a point too. Yeah. yeah. They lost um, on a Lou Dort, like, getting blocked by Harden, and it was the Lou Dort in his mm-hmm. rookie season, bro. Like, that is, like, a... That is literally losing by a single hair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, At this point, I do need to, you know, hop off soon. But... Yeah. I will say to you, considering Oklahoma has one of the most... Maybe nerve-wracking, but also, like, crazy spots in terms of what your GM can do. Mm-hmm. What... If you're the one seed in the West, and you still kind of like have like low key like developmental pieces on your team like you're not really um you know what I mean? like it's not you're not you're there not, yet potential wise you're not there yet I'm saying like how how would you go about it in terms of would you flip for vets now would you just mess around with like and try to the only more? move these are there are two moves that I would approve for Oklahoma to do and I think it's the only two moves that I can possibly see them doing number one is trading for Lori Merkinen I think that if we were to bring in another big name we trade for Laurie Markkinen, mm-hmm. okay? If you can't bring in Laurie Markkinen to play at the four and five with Chet and him, the only thing you do is trade a couple second round picks, maybe one first round pick because we have the, the, the picks to do it, and you bring a guy, Andre Drummond. Because oh, the y'all, only yeah, thing y'all we do need, need a, is mm-hmm. rebounding. That's the mm-hmm. only thing Oklahoma lacks in, and I'm yeah. willing to sacrifice a draft pick for Andre Drummond because he's a great rebounder, and we know he's a very gritty guy. He you just had a 2020 game. The clumsiness, big yeah, pain, bro. But <laughs> here's the thing: we're such a young, energetic team that we can we can afford to have a guy like Andre Drummond on the court because mm-hmm. we just need those scrappy boards. And we need Chet to be around somebody so, to teach him to teach him how to be scrappy. Yeah, we, we can afford having his deficiencies on the court. <laughs> we can, like, we can realistically, no, I, bro. I, I, I right? Mean, and like, point. bro, like, like, I don't, like, we'll, like, we'll see what Oklahoma does. In my opinion, I think Andre Drummond is the perfect is the perfect realistic trade candidate for them. And if we're really shooting for the stars, we go for a Lori Markkinen. I, I like that. But I think that's a great way to end the episode. This was, bro, we were planning to do like a 15 minute episode. This is how easy it is for us to record like this. Like we just spit No, nah, like, nah, nah, hold on. Because what did, what did Clay shoot the other night? Hold on. Oh my Sorry, God. I, I had to get one, one, one more shot off. <laughs> yes, now we got to do this. Don't jinx him tonight. De- defend Don't that. Tonight. Defend I'll that. Be, I'll be on next week after what you do tonight. Don't jinx him. Don't jinx him now. Stop playing with him. He's three for six right now. That's efficient. That's efficient. <laughs> I can. I, um, I can be He's three for like... six if you give me enough games where I just get to shoot. <laughs> I can... <laughs> I'm joking. No. Uh, yeah, your your boy uh, your boy uh, uh, Clay is shooting three for six, but Curry has three assists and turn- two turnovers at the moment. But anyways, this is a great way to wrap up the episode. Uh, this has been super fun. Obviously, it, we hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, episodes are going to be a, a little more structured. I know we just went through like seven segments, even though we said we're only doing one. Um, <laughs> but that's just the fun of it. Uh, thank you guys again for sticking around for the last few months. We're excited to bring you guys consistent output of episodes again. It's going to be super fun. Um, but yeah, let's keep the ball rolling. Peace. Peace. Z, we